The Dane axe is an early type of battle axe, primarily used during the transition between the European Viking Age and early Middle Ages. Other names for the weapon include English long axe, Danish axe, and hafted axe. Construction. Most axes, both in period illustrations and extant artifact, that fall under the description of Danish axe, possess type L or type M heads according to the Peterson axe typology. Both types consist of a wide, thin blade, with pronounced horns, at both the toe and heel of the bit. Cutting surfaces vary, but is generally between 20 cm and 30 cm. Type L blades tend to be smaller, with the toe of the bit swept forward for superior shearing capability. Later type M blades are typically larger overall, with a more symmetrical toe and heel. The blade itself was reasonably light and forged very thin, making it superb for cutting. The fatness of the body on top the edge is as thin as 2 mm. Many of these axes were constructed with a reinforced bit, typically of a higher carbon steel to facilitate a harder, sharper edge. Average weight of an axe this size is between 1 kg and 2 kg. Proportionally, the long axe has more in common with a modern meat cleaver than a wood axe. This complex construction results in a lively and quick weapon with devastating cutting ability. Based on period depictions, the haft of a long axe for combat was usually between a prox 0.9 meters and 1.2 meters long, although Dane axes used as status symbols might be as long as 1.5 to 1.7 meters. Such axes might also feature inlaid silver and frequently do not have the flared steel edge of a weapon designed for war. Some surviving examples also feature a brass handicraft cap, often richly decorated, which presumably served to keep the head of the weapon secure on the haft, as well as protecting the end of the haft from the rigors of battle. Ash and oak are the most likely materials for the haft, as they have always been the primary materials used for pole arms in Europe. History through the course of the 10th-11th centuries, the Danax gained popularity in areas outside Scandinavia where Viking influence was strong, such as England, Ireland and Normandy. Historical accounts depict the Danax as the weapon of the warrior elite in this period, such as the Huskarls of Anglo-Saxon England. In the Bayer Tapestry, a visual record of the ascent of William the Conqueror to the throne of England, the axe is almost exclusively wielded by well-armoured Huskarls. These Huskarls formed the core bodyguard of King Harold at the Battle of Hastings. The Bayer Tapestry also depicts a Huskarl cleaving a Norman knight's horse's head with one blow. The Danax is also known to have been used by the Varangian Guard, also known as Pele Kyphoris Frora, the axe-bearing guard. One surviving ivory plaque from the 10th century Constantinople depicts a Varangian holding an axe that is at least as tall as its wielder. Although the name retains its Scandinavian heritage, the Danax became widely used throughout Europe from the 12th century as axes gained acceptance as a knightly weapon, albeit not achieving the status of the sword. They also began to be used widely as an infantry pole arm, with the haft lengthening to about 6 feet. The 13th and 14th centuries also saw form changes, with the blade also lengthening, the rear horn extending to touch or attach to the haft. The lengthened weapon, especially if combined with the lengthened blade, was called a spath in England. Some believe this weapon is the ancestor of the halberd. While the use of the Dane axe continued into the 14th century, axes with an armor-piercing back spike and spear-like spike on the fore end of the haft became more common, eventually evolving into the poleaxe in the 15th century. The simple Danish axe continued to be used in the west of Scotland and in Ireland into the 16th century. In Ireland, it was particularly associated with gallo glass mercenaries, famous historical figures associated with the axe. After the Battle of Stikelestad, the axe also became the symbol of Saint Olafin can still be seen on the coat of arms of Norway. However, this is because the axe is the implement of his martyrdom, rather than signifying use. 
King Stephen of England famously used a Danish axe at the Battle of Lincoln 1141. One account says after his sword broke, another says he used his sword only after his axe broke. Richard the Lionheart was often recorded in Victorian times wielding a large war axe, though references are sometimes wildly exaggerated as befitted a national hero. Long and long after he was quiet in his grave, his terrible battle axe, with twenty English pounds of English steel in its mighty head, A Child's History of England by Charles Dickens. Richard is, however, recorded as using a Danish axe at the relief of Jaffa. Geoffrey de Lusignan is another famous crusader associated with the axe. Robert the Bruce, King of Scotland, famously killed Henry de Bouin at the Battle of Bannockburn with a single blow of his axe. The blow was so powerful it split a bow hun's helmet and skull open and snapped the shaft of the axe. Given that Bruce was wielding the axe on horseback though, it is much more likely that the weapon in this case was a one-handed horseman's axe. In the 14th century, the use of axes is increasingly noted by Froissart in his Chronicle, with King John II using one at the Battle of Poitiers in 1356 and Sir James Douglas at the Battle of Otterburn in 1388. Bretons were apparently noted axe users, with Bertrand du Guesclin and Olivier de Clisson both wielding axes in battle. In these cases, we cannot tell whether the weapon was a Danish axe or the protopole axe.